what led them to be who they are. Picturize a place and time where humans from all over the world work together to build new invention, enhance their knowledge on anything, and discover more about the universe to make this world a better place. Well, such a time and place existed a long time ago and has been almost forgotten. The Golden Age Abu Ali ibn Sina popularly known as Avicenna, the most incredible, famous, and influential person of the Golden Age, a towering figure in the history of philosophy and also in science. But yet, we don't ponder much on him. He has contributed around 450 works on a wide range of subjects, of which around 240 have survived, out of which 150 concentrate on philosophy and 40 on medicine. Ibn Sina was a Persian polymath who lived from 980 AD to 1037 AD. This man was widespread across many fields. He is credited with advances in philosophy, chemistry, logic, Islamic theology, mathematics, physics, astronomy, psychology, and medicine. How can one man contribute so much? His best contributions was a canon of medicine, in which he gives a detail of all medical practices until that point, which was the Bible of medical sciences in medieval universities until the mid-16th century. Ibn Sina was born in Afshona, Bukhara, present-day Uzbekistan on 22nd August 980. His father's name was Abdullah. His father was a well-respected member of administration from Balkh, present-day Afghanistan. His father had a great impact in shaping him. His father assigned teachers at a very young age to teach him. Being an incredible, fast learner, he memorized the entire Quran by the age of 10. Then he moved to a self-learning of jurisprudence and got engaged in legal disputations. His father also made him to stay with a vegetable seller to give him an introduction to Indian mathematics. Once, a great philosopher named Al-Natili arrived in his town. Ibn Sina's father warmly welcomed Natili home for the residence required for him there. Ibn Sina learned an introductory philosophical book, Issa God, under him. But as time passed, when he was just 14 years of age, Ibn Sina reached an extent where he understood Isagaj better than his master Al-Natili. While leaving home, this was Natili's advice to Sina's father. Never allow this child to take up any occupation other than learning. Then Sina moved his concentration towards learning medicine and law. He used to visit the mosque frequently. When it became dark, he set out a lamp before him and devoted himself to reading and writing until sleep overtook him. He also claims he used to see those very problems which confused him in his dream and became clear in his dream itself. This shows how deeply he was rooted to learning science. He understood concepts as far as is humanly possible. Then, he turned to master metaphysics of Aristotle. In spite of his high, reputed intelligence, he was not able to understand this time. He dedicated all hours of day in metaphysics alone, but still found no result. Then, he himself consolidated by saying, This book has no way of understanding. But one fine afternoon, he was at the bookseller's quarter. Then suddenly, a salesman approached him with a book in his hand, calling the book for sale. But Sina refused to buy that book, thinking it was a low-merit one. But the salesman pleaded for him to buy this book, as its owner needed money. The seller gave it to him for just 
three their hands. Then Sina opened the book. To her surprise, it was Al Farabi's book on metaphysics. This time, he understood the concepts clearly and was able to hold the book to his heart. He rejoiced and gave much in alms to the poor in gratitude to God. One fine day, the Sultan of that time in Bukhara had an illness which baffled the expert doctors of that time. Since Sina was well known for his zeal for learning and reading, they brought him to Sultan's attention. Thus, he was permitted in treating Sultan at a very young age, which he succeeded. In return to his service, he was given permission and was admitted to a building with many rooms. Well, these rooms had chests of books piled on top of each other. Each room had books specialized on each category. He read these books and mastered what was useful in them and discovered the status of each man in science. When he reached the age of 18, he had finished with all of these sciences. As years passed and his father died and he was free to govern affairs of his own interest in the administrative post of the Sultan, the necessity led him to move to other cities and states and finally joined in the state of Amir Khabuz. But at that time, there occurred the seizing of Amir Khabuz. There, a poet named Ubaid al Juz joined him and recited a poem on Ibn Sina, which contains the verse When he became great, no country could hold him. And when his price went up, he lagged a buyer. One day again, the kingdom which Ibn Sina was residing was attacked and Sina was decided to be executed under Amir Shams al Dawla. But due to Sina's high respect all over, he was considered just to be banished from the state. But suddenly, an illness caught over their Amir. Amir Shams al Dawla himself apologized to Ibn Sina and requested to provide necessary treatment for his recovery. Then, years he spent under al Dawla, doing research and recording his findings of almost all dimensions. There was even a weekly meeting held in the palace, where every Friday Sina recited his knowledge. Days passed, and this mastermind was struck with a serious illness, which he ceased treating himself and would say, The governor who used to govern my body is now incapable of governing, and so treatment is no longer of any use. By 1037, this great prodigy left the world. Ibn Sina never went through a book examining it from beginning to end. Rather, he directly went to difficult passages, integrated problems, and thus was his degree of knowledge and level of understanding. He was like, when he describes a disease, he describes the source, and then how it affects the patient, what condition causes it, and how it plays with the life of a patient in longer run. This sort of thinking was applied all across his areas. So in return, we got a unified system to analyze all the different spheres of inquiry. This great man had an interdisciplinary approach which really resonates even today. Music